It's another video from Aussie's Robot. But you got a banana collection. It's another video from Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> Remember Jimmy Neutron? Did I ever tell you I was actually selected to be Jimmy Neutron at Universal Studios? I was there when my kids were little wee bits. And they do live skits and they put the giant Jimmy Neutron hair stuff. What do you call it? Like uh, like the bouffant hair? Yeah, and I was there with the audience. And then I teased my kids. I said, you guys didn't know I was Jimmy Neutron, did you? And in retrospect, that was kind of a rockety graphic style retro type of... Uh, animated shows so they fit in with my theme overall but anyway welcome my friends you didn't come here to uh, listen to me ramble on about Jimmy Neutron and days gone by although these toys are about days gone by and I'm gonna tell you something about the walking robot box that you won't be able to unsee once I tell you, but before we get rolling, as always, get comfortable in your giant Barco lounger or your couch, your sofa, your lazy boy, your spinning bar stool, wherever you're at. And if you're in the morning hours, grab a steaming cup of coffee or tea and sweeten it and stir it and clank it a bit. Or if it's night or the noon, grab a brewski, man. Kick back, relax, get a snack. And you know what? It's time to look at another cool toy. I have my Dasani, which has a sort of a, um, an improved crappy bottle. They, they, I think they pulled back from the brink. I think they had their... Uh, stress and dynamics engineers say, look, we can't make it any thinner or we can't even continue with this thinness. It's ready to, to explode, you know, because when you see these water cases stacked upon each other, they must do stress testing, right? And they said, look, we have, we're at the brink, man. We can't do this anymore. We'll lose as many as we save. So maybe they, they added a fraction of a millimeter, but it's not as flimsy, although it's still pretty flimsy. Anyway, if you're comfortably ensconced now and you have a snack in hand that you're chawing on, let's focus on this very cool toy and very rare example. I like it because it's so damn small. It could fit on the shelf with no problem, including the box. And we're going to get to a box, the box, in a sec. Before I do also, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed already, uh, you know, click the subscribe and the bell thingamajig that's floating there so you'll get notified of all these videos okay with all that perfunctory stuff out of the way let's look at this box i like this box a lot a lot a lot and i gotta tell you now i'm gonna tell you something once i tell you you won't be able to unsee it but when i first saw this box i thought that this flying saucer was his barbecue and i thought he was barbecuing something in fact it looks like he's holding ready to you know grab a hot dog a wiener or a burger or something and stick it on that flame right there it almost looks like the smoke's coming off or maybe that's a burger on there that's the impression i got i'm like why the hell is that robot barbecuing over there and, I, and only when i actually got the box was i able to um, realize that i guess that's a spaceship but you know who really knows it it maybe it's not because look at the scale you know, is it really in the background or is he looking it over and saying, ah, oh, that's where my burger is being made. So anyway, this is a tiny, tiny box. Look at this. What are we talking here? Four inches? Four inches. Nice and tiny. Gets the job done, though. And uh, it has a nice depiction of the robot. I like the artwork on it. Uh, of course, the, the uh, robot looks better here than most of these typical paddle feet winders. The side only has just some cool writing. I like the font, this particular blocky font that's slanted forward. Did they spell everything right? For a minute I thought it said maniacal. Now look at the side here. 
You got the cool robot. This time he's got a rocket. That is very cool. And in this tiny box, it packs, packs a punch. By the way, this opens up like this. Just pull the flap open. Same thing here. And let's go to the other side. So it's a, a nifty, a nifty little box. Now, a lot of people like this. They call it the polka dot version. I'm trying to decipher whether the designers were just freaking lazy and did this as a joke or if they really said hey this is you know pretty cool <laughs> i i actually do like it. It, it it grew on me at first i thought man these guys really were lazy and by the way this is an sy you can see the trademark here sy japan because they've reproduced uh this toy out of china a lot of variations of these paddle feet so don't get it confused with it. Cheap knockoff, although they never, as far as I know, they've never reproduced this polka dot pattern. And, you know, the the face shield gives me kind of a Gort-esque vibe to it, right? I could just picture the beam shooting out of it. I wonder why they didn't make the box reflect this style. Now, out of all these little paddle feet, this is probably one of the nicest, if not the nicest box. And this is arguably the most valuable version of this toy. So to get the combination, the, the toy and the box, is uh, pretty unusual. I got this actually out of Japan, and it was flying way, way, way under the radar. And so when I pointed it out to my bar, he was even like, Oh, wow, you know, he wasn't even paying attention to something like this. But when we saw it, I said, you watch. At the end, the bidding is going to get very spirited. And sure enough, it did. And it probably went up, like, from the low bid that it was at at the time. It probably went up, I don't know, eight times the price, which didn't surprise me. I uh, had a high number on there. But anyway, let's look at this cylindrical body. It kind of starts off here tapers down, has a thicker body, then it tapers down again. Has some open claws here, and the arms are fixed here. In the back, you can see that it says made in Japan right there. This arm is also fixed. So there's not much to say because it's all rivets. You know, I call it polka dots, but it's really technically rivets. Um, I guess he's in like a extremely windy conditions <laughs> they needed a lot of rivets on the guy to keep the metal even his feet are riveted riveted on both sides and it kind of hangs up a little bit so i'm going to unwind them and let's let's wind them up and see him go if if he does he's still working pretty good is left when you so we'll do it one more time I, li I like to get them all unwound because when I put them on a glass shelf the last thing I want them is to kind of come to life and God forbid trip the motion sensor and uh, trip my alarm in the process or fall on another toy unless he's on the bottom, which it probably won't be. Uh, anyway, this is a look at your mechanical walking robot by SY. Uh, like I said, initially, I wasn't a huge fan of this. I thought it was goofy, but now I really like him just because he's so unique and different. And I love this kind of tealy blue metallic. It's not like a deep inky blue. It is kind of a tealish in... When you have it in front of you, it doesn't look that way. on. It looks more traditional blue on camera. And also the yellow plays off really well against the uh, the blue. So it's kind of a nice color combination. And the box is probably the nicest out of all these paddle feet walkers. So um, 
I feel it was a good score. So with that, as always, listen, thank you. I appreciate your time. And if you like this video, if you like tin toys and robots in particular, and all this other cool stuff that I have going on here, let me know by thumbing up the video. That's important to help these stupid algorithms. And uh, I'll remind you too, if you like the live stream portion, let me know in the comments so I can decide whether I want to continue to do that or dial it back or increase it or whatever the case may be. So with that, thanks again, my friends, and I will talk to you. Later.